Welcome to Money Talk with Aaron Ricketts, presented by Ricketts, Ricketts & Associates, 3245 North Adrian Highway, Suite L. The opinions voiced on Money Talk are for general information only and are not intended to provide specific advice or recommendations for any individual. To determine which investments may be appropriate for you, consult with your attorney, accountant, financial, or tax advisor prior to investing. Securities are offered through LPL Financial, member FINRA, SIPC. Aaron's back with us in the studio. Hey, Aaron. Hey, John. Okay, we got another great show today. Mm -hmm. We get to talk taxes. Taxes. Everybody's number one subject. (laughs) It's a subject. (laughs) I tell you, the the conversations I have with people, uh, especially, I say younger people, you know, those are still working. Or just started a job, I tell them, if you can control, you know, what you pay in taxes, that's going to be most likely your single most biggest expense throughout your life. So focus on that. Think about that and do what you can to educate yourself. Uh, you know, have that uh, long, good quality, long conversation with a, an accountant about taxes on a regular basis so you can stay up on the tax law changes because that's kind of what we're going to talk about first is some tax law changes and what I should say tax law changes, but what might happen. We always want to stay on top of that. You know, I read a thing that says we spend more on taxes than we do on food, education, and healthcare combined. That makes sense. Absolutely does. I mean, a multi-trillion dollar budget at our federal level. Then we have state taxes, right? And all the, I say state income tax, and then all the other taxes that they don't call taxes. Right, fees. Yes, yes. <laughs> I remember doing, uh, um, uh, I started doing this, uh, say, 15 years ago, going to the schools locally here and had a little, uh, you know, one hour presentation about, you know, how uh, the U.S. economy works in general. Mostly it was about investing and doing the right thing there, especially when you're you're young and forming good habits, right? I always talk about having, you know, getting yourself in a uh, a regular routine in those habits. But one part of it was taxes. And boy, I started seeing those kids, uh, you know, dozing off and, you know, looking (laughs) over and they have no clue what that means because most of them, even if they have a job, they're still not paying any taxes or, you know, they, they don't think they are at least. And then I start talking about payroll taxes or Social Security tax and, and, and that, you know, having that conversation. And it really doesn't have, it doesn't resonate with them. So I kind of started cutting that out or talking about it less. But then here we're talking about uh, me talking to adults and we kind of get the same glazed uh uh, I look mm-hmm. <laughs> and I start talking right. about this stuff. So uh, it, it's always good just to have, uh, well, you're listening out there, right? So listen to this. It's good information. Let's talk about some changes or possible changes in the tax law. Of course, uh, Congress is uh, in some type of gridlock and has been for quite some time, um, mostly for political reasons, but there is certainly a difference in uh, philosophy out there. Here's a question. I want to help pay for my grandchild's college education, do I get a tax break? And the answer is no. But if you use savings bonds, uh, unless the child is a dependent of yours, so your grandchild is the dependent of yours, you won't be able to deduct those either, that those uh, expenses either. So generally, though, interest on savings bonds can be deducted if they're used in that year to pay for education. But that person that you're paying for has to be a spouse, uh, a child, you know, that you are directly uh, responsible for. You have to claim that person. That is a uh, how they identify somebody as a de- dependent that you claimed them. So keep that in mind because some people just casually will say, Well, do you have savings bonds or, you know, uh, if you have savings bonds, you can use that. Uh, You won't have to pay taxes on those. It can be deducted, you know, for educational expenses. Well, there are rules on that. Make sure you find out. We had this conversation a few years ago when uh, the tax law was implemented, the the most recent, how they capped the state and local tax deductions to $10,000 on that Schedule A. 
and a lot of people in the high income tax states or states that have high property tax rates. Uh, so uh, the SALT is what it stands for or the uh, acronym for state and local tax uh, deduction, that part of that. So there is a group of uh, uh, Democrats in the House Ways and Means Committee that would like to repeal that or relax it. And it's mainly those Democrats that are in the high tax states, so New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, and California. Uh, it's pretty much uh, because the uh, Republicans control the Senate, most likely it's not going to happen, but they've been talking about this for quite some time. What's interesting to me is if, if those of us that are listening and us that are talking, the, most of us don't pay $10,000 in property taxes and state taxes here in Michigan. Most of us are well below that limit um, or, you know, we're near that limit. So this really isn't changing anything that we've done or what we can do. These are, you know, wealthy people in wealthy states. And it's really interesting to me that you have a party that would be, you know, wanting to repeal that because usually that's the party of, you know, tax the higher income or those that have wealth. <laughs> so it just shows you that, you know, it's a strange world we live in sometimes <laughs> when I see this stuff and uh, to hear that argument on that side, because it certainly isn't protecting anybody but those that have wealth. Um, just something to throw out there. Here's a, a, a thought. If you're able to itemize on Schedule A, you also get a charitable write-off equal to the value of an annuity. So, if you have an annuity, let's say you put $10,000 in an annuity and it grew to $20,000. Well, if you were to uh, take that money out, remember it's a retirement. It's identified as a retirement product. So you uh, can take it out after age 59 and a half and not get a penalty on that portion that's the gain in there, that you know half of it, right? That $10,000 gain. So if you wanted to donate that to charity, you could get, if you itemize, right, on Schedule A, and some people still do, if you itemize, you can take that $10,000 that was originally put in there, write it or put it on there as a charitable deduction, and then the 10000 that goes to the charity that's the gain, that won't be taxed. So it's just a way to uh, make a charitable deduction and not pay that tax if uh, that is the, yeah, I always tell people, you know, you, you got to want to give first focus on that or make that your focus and then follow the law. If the law says you can take a deduction or a part of it is not taxable, do that. Follow your accountant's advice. They'll give you the advice. They know these rules. Interesting uh, uh, thing I came across is there's a car dealership in this uh, uh, part of the country that has a competition for high achieving students in that area. So the schools provide the eligible names for kids that were high achievers, and then the dealership randomly draws a name. The winner gets a new automobile. Oh, wow. I'm telling you. Yeah. <clears throat> Any automobile companies? Or <laughs> dealerships? <laughs> dealerships? <out there? laughs> Want to start this? This would be a great idea. What a great way to uh, promote themselves. A young lady won and accepted the vehicle, but she didn't report as, as <laughs> income. Because it's a taxable prize, she has to, even though she didn't have any other income, she has to do a tax return and file as income and pay taxes. I hear this uh, uh, story. It doesn't happen every other day, right, that we know of somebody that's won a car or won something of significant value. But the IRS is very particular and not just particular about those that receive it, that those that give it. The penalties are just as tough or even tougher for those that give gifts and don't report them. So I tell people, make sure that you're, if you're giving gifts of, of cash or something to your, your family or friends, your kids or grandkids, make sure that you're, um, you know the tax law and what the rules are. Because if somehow something got reported to the IRS, which it does happen, uh, believe it or not, in this world of technology, they can go on the internet and find a lot of stuff out of how money is exchanged. So be careful on that. Talk to your accountant, financial advisor. They will give you that 
uh, direction. But I hear this a lot where people win a car or win a large uh, prize that's, you know, it's not a cash prize. And then they can't afford that tax that's owed on it. So they have to sell it. They get it and they have to sell it. Another thing is they give away uh, uh, leases a lot, you know, a two-year lease or three-year lease. Well, there's a financial value to that, a monetary value that uh, is taxable, and you have to pay taxes on that. So if you can't come up with the two, three thousand dollars or five thousand dollars that is uh, on a twenty, thirty thousand dollar lease, you know, over that time, you might have to give it up or not accept it. You're certainly going to be required to pay pay that because the IRS will receive that because the giver is required to send a, a particular form to the IRS. Keep that in mind. Parents who help a child repay a student loan cannot deduct the interest that they pay. So I'll say it again. Parents who help a child repay a student loan cannot deduct interest unless that debt is in the parent's name. So it's all part of that, you know, schedule that uh, I'm talking about, uh, Schedule A. But remember that there are different types of deductions that are allowed throughout those, those times. So if a child is, if you're helping a child pay their loan, they may be able to deduct the interest. So keep that in mind. And remember, there's this thing called the American Opportunity Tax Credit. It's worth up to $2,500 a year for each of the first four years of college. So when you, of course, if you get a full ride, it's not deductible. You're not supposed to use it. But uh, the uh, school or your uh, who you get a loan from, those folks will send you a notice to say what was borrowed that year or what was paid that year. And from there, your accountant will put that on the tax return and you can get up to $2,500 per st- per student, per year for the first four years of a credit. That's a tax credit. It's fantastic. I'm glad they didn't get rid of this in the last tax law because they had talked about it. So there's a lot of uh, uh, rules that go around that. And there's, of course, uh, income rules. If you make over a certain amount, you lose it. So just keep that in mind and make sure you're getting that uh, tax credit and you're taking those forms to your accountant when tax time comes around. Financial disability can be grounds for allowing a late filed refund claim. All right. If somebody has not filed properly or they have a claim where they're uh, not using all that might be um, claimed as a deduction and it was from their own incapacitation, they may be able to go back more than the three years that you can go back and correct a claim or correct a tax return. And this um, this situation, I think, happens more than we think. And I'll give you an example. I had somebody come to me about five years ago, and she um, uh, had said her mom, you know, was in a, um, a local nursing home, and she'd been there quite some time and had used uh, – um, a lot of her money, but still had quite a bit of her own money left and decided she um, um, might have to file for, you know, Medicaid at some point, want to know what the rules are, explain to her. Well, she brought in her mom's tax returns because I require that when I meet somebody for the first time and I'm reading it. And I said, your mom has, you know, $60,000 worth of IRA deductions, pension and IRA deductions on this tax form, but I don't see anything uh, any medical expenses deducted? And she says, well, she, you know, other than having dementia, she's rather healthy. I said, I believe you can, um, as a part of the nursing home stay, um, much of that or most of that would be deductible because it's part of that medical care. And she didn't know that. And I said, you need to get to your her accountant and get this information to him. They were able to go back. They went back the three years and uh, filed a claim and got back over like $14,000 in taxes that were paid during that time. So we, you know, as accountants, as financial advisors or tax attorneys, 
we know that there are things or rules out there that you might not know, and that's very it's it's in your best interest. It's very important for you to go seek out those answers. And if you go to one accountant or one uh, financial advisor and it's not sounding right or you're not you're thinking you're not getting that right answer, it's not a problem to go shop around. Absolutely. I enjoy it when people say, I'm coming in to speak with you about this matter and I'm going to speak with somebody else. I'm glad you're doing that. I want you to, uh, you know, work on that and keep that building that knowledge and get the right info. Well, if they want to get a first or a second opinion. Or a third. Or a third. <laughs> What's the number they should call? Call me, 265-3540. Thanks a lot, Aaron. Thanks, John. That's Money Talk with Aaron Ricketts, presented by Ricketts, Ricketts & Associates, 3245 North Adrian Highway, Suite L. The opinions voiced on Money Talk are for general information only and are not intended to provide specific advice or recommendations for any individual. To determine which investments may be appropriate for you, consult with your attorney, accountant, financial or tax advisor prior to investing. Securities are offered through LPL Financial Member FINRA SIPC. Join us once again next week for Money Talk here on 103.9 WLAN.